All right, guys, so one of the things we teach here at Arizona Automotive Institute in the diesel program is engine brakes. So I wanted to give you guys an overview of the engine brakes on a Cummins ISX. This is an older model ISX, but engine brakes uh, really haven't changed over the years. Um, I have a previous video on here where I discuss Jake brakes and uh, basically the modules for Jake brakes that uh, operate on some engines. Cummins is a little bit different in these heavy duty engines in that they created their own braking system that they call the Inta brake. Um, if you look at this overhead right here, you'll notice that you have rocker arms on both sides. So this is a dual overhead cam uh, engine, but you'll notice that on the left side here, all of the rockers, they're just one per cylinder, right? The only thing this left side camshaft and rocker arms control is the actual uh, fuel injector. But if you look over here on the other side, you'll see that each, one, each cylinder has three different rocker arms. So on the other side, what we got is an injector for intake valves, and in, or sorry, a rocker arm for intake valves, a rocker arm for exhaust valves. And then right here in the middle, this guy, this guy is the rocker arm that operates the engine brake or the into brake. Now you can see that it has a lot of play right here. So while the engine is running and the intake and uh, exhaust valves and your injector uh, rockers, these guys will be going up and down running the engine, but you'll notice that when I start this up in a minute that this guy doesn't really move. Uh, and that's because you don't want the engine brakes applying all the time during engine operation. So one of the key things to consider is that a fully loaded tractor trailer could weigh as much as 83,000 pounds, which is 41 and a half tons. Something that weighs that much is really hard to stop. So the ultimate goal of having an engine brake is to help slow the truck down so that you don't burn through your service brakes and lose your braking completely. So these guys aren't designed to completely stop a truck, but they are designed to help the truck slow down. The basics of how a compression brake works is that you, we have a four stroke engine, right? We have intake, compression, power, and exhaust. What this guy does is it opens the exhaust valve at the top of the compression stroke. That's not when it should normally open. Normally the exhaust valve only opens during the exhaust stroke. So we have this guy here designed so that if you got your engine brakes on and you're coming down an incline or something and you're trying to slow down, this guy will actually start opening the exhaust valve at the top of the compression stroke, releasing all the compressed air. Without compressed air, you can't ignite fuel, so you're losing power in that cylinder. Plus, the engine is doing all of that work to compress that air, and then you're just letting it go away. So basically, what we're doing is we're absorbing the power of the truck by compressing air in the engine and not supplying a power stroke. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, say something in the comments, and I'll explain it more in depth. So anyway, this thing will sit here neutral and just kind of ride here without activating until it's activated. So it's activated by the driver in the cab, turning the switches on, and there's some parameters that'll be programmed into the computer and so forth. Uh, but when the engine ECM wants to activate the engine brakes, it's gonna signal this guy right here. This is a solenoid that is normally closed. Uh, when it receives the signal, it'll open, allowing oil pressure inside here to knock this rocker arm off of a divot. And then what's gonna happen is it's gonna start making contact with the cam lobe. And when it starts making contact with the cam lobe, then it'll actually start opening that valve. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start this up and then I'm going to show you uh, what it looks like running without being activated. And then we're going to manually activate the brake by pushing uh, the button up here on the top which is going to open this normally closed valve and allow the brakes to actuate. So you get a chance to see what it looks like running without brake actuation and then what it looks like with brake actuation. So hold on for that. All right, so we're ready to start this guy up. You can hear the electric fuel pump kicking in there. Give it a minute.
that kind of demonstrated to you guys uh, what I was talking about there. So when it was running before I put the screwdriver in this guy, you can see this guy right here was kind of just standing still. But as soon as I actuated this, this rocker arm started moving, engaging that brake, allowing that exhaust valve to open on the compression stroke. Uh, so what's really nifty about this solenoid though, is that, that allowing us to push it open with that screwdriver uh, provides a lot of troubleshooting info, right? So they do make tools where you can connect to this harness and test voltage and check for an open and stuff like that without even taking the valve cover off. Uh, but sometimes you just want to get in here and kind of get an eye on what's going on if the brakes aren't working like they're supposed to. And so by pushing that button there, what you're basically doing is you're mechanically opening an electric valve. So you're bypassing the electrical portion. So if the driver came in and said, my brakes aren't working and you uh, did this test, you eliminated an electrical problem as probably the source by you push the button and all of a sudden it started working then, or that means that it's probably an electrical problem, right? Uh, so you didn't eliminate the electrical problem, sorry for that. Yeah, you push the button and, it's, and, it's, and it starts working, but it doesn't work on its own, then you got an electrical issue, a switch issue, a bad solenoid, wiring harness, something like that. But if you do push it and uh, nothing works, even if you manually push the button, you could have another issue completely that's either hydraulically related or mechanically related. You could have an issue with the oil pressure required to offset the detents on these guys, or you could have a mechanical problem, which is usually the adjustment. If you look on here, you see adjustment screws. So these need tune-ups, just like any diesel, where you adjust valve lash, injector height, uh, brake setting, and they even make special tools you use to adjust the gap in there. Uh, so it could very well have been that someone misadjusted them or they are mechanically uh, failing. So, but anyway, there's all kinds of different types of compression brakes out there. And the interbrake on this Cummins is just one of many. So if you're going to work on these, you want to be kind of familiar with all the different types. Um, and I hope this video helped explain kind of how these function to some degree for you guys. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel and please uh, support your local trade schools. Thank you.